Adding to the complexity of the disaster, ExxonMobil acknowledged today Harvey has damaged two of its refineries, causing the release of hazardous pollutants. A full assessment of the damage won't be possible while conditions on the ground remain so dangerous. One thing that is clear, thousands in Houston have been forced from their homes in need of food, water, and a roof over their head. The George R. Brown Convention Center has become the city's largest shelter. Rachel Osher Lindsay is there. She's an editor with Dallas PBS station KERA. She is in Houston reporting on the storm. We spoke a short time ago, and I began by asking about how many people are there now. Well, yesterday it was at 5,100, and today 9,100, so it has grown substantially over the past 24 hours. And they were already at capacity yesterday, but the Red Cross says that they are not going to be turning anyone away. So they have expanded into other parts of the convention center. Pretty much every square inch is being used as either um, a dormitory or there's a makeshift hospital, a large place in the back where people are sorting donations and bringing in donations of everything from clothes and shoes. So it is um, as packed as it can be here, but they don't want to turn anybody away. And the Red Cross says they're currently working to find other places that they can bring people because they don't really anticipate that the need for places to stay will end anytime soon. Are things working pretty well there? I recall being uh, post-Katrina at the convention center in New Orleans, and there were a lot of systems broke down, including the plumbing, et cetera. How are things working? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like so far so good. They have had a surge of volunteers who've wanted to help out, and they actually um, had to turn away people from the day volunteer shift today. The people that are staying here, they had to evacuate their homes that I've talked with. They say they feel relatively comfortable. Um, you know, they have credited the city with doing a, a pretty good job of giving them a place to stay. And I think just the ongoing concern would be what to do as more and more people come here. Um, the Red Cross says that they are working to get people in touch with mental health services if they need those and um, connect with prescriptions because in many cases people just fled with the clothes on their back and don't have access to the medications that they need to be taking. So some other challenges that we're seeing here. Give us your impressions of what's going on there. I assume there's a range of emotions uh, among people who are in such uh, desperate need right now. Yes, I actually, um, my colleague and I were just talking to a woman who had lost everything in Hurricane Katrina, and she relocated to Houston. Of course, you remember many people who evacuated from New Orleans ended up resettling in Houston, and she was just beside herself and a bit stunned that this is happening all over again. Um, we also talked to family members of folks who were trying to locate, you know, their loved ones in the convention center where, you know, they hadn't been able to charge their phone for a few days, but they finally got service again and were relieved to find that they, you know, their grandmother or their brother or sister was actually here. And so there have been a lot of reunions in that way. But I've also talked to a man who um, hasn't spoken to his parents for four days. And he was just trying as best he could to keep it together um, without knowing what had happened to them and being unable to reach them. Have you seen many volunteers who've come to help out? Yes, so many volunteers. Um, uh, I talked to someone who had come to sign up to be a volunteer, but they turned her away, and now they're only accepting volunteers for the night shift. And um, there's also, uh, you, you see medical professionals walking by. Um, the Red Cross said that they had a huge amount of the medical community in Houston step up and, and come to help with addressing any of the medical needs that people have here at the convention center. So everyone is really pitching in, and that's just evidenced by what you can see in the back where people have been bringing donations. So many clothes, shoes, a, a wall of diapers that people have donated. Um, Houston's really stepping up, and um, the Red Cross does say that they do need wheelchairs at the convention center. So that's one thing that they're um, hoping to acquire more of in the next few days. All right, we'll, we'll help get the word out. Reporter Rachel Osher Lindley, thank you for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. We just got an update from Rachel after we spoke. She now tells us that the convention center is running out of cots.